plots. And a terrifying crime shows what happens when we take conspiracy theories a little too seriously. Now we take a look at the story of a young woman who encounters aliens, advanced life from another galaxy, which makes us ask the question, what if the smartest beings in the universe are wrong? Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. This may be the fastest recorded episode of Dead Rabbit Radio ever. It's slowly approaching 100 degrees outside. I really, really uh, waited a long time to record this episode. I recorded it like almost the hottest time of the day. So we're going to have to get right through this. First off, let's give a shout out to one of our legacy Patreon. Actually, you know what? Today I want to give a shout out. I don't know if I ever gave her a shout out for this. So today's shout out is going to be... Audrey Mackamson. Everyone give a round of applause to Audrey as she's walking into Dead Rabbit Command. Do a little bow. She's not a Patreon supporter, but a long time ago I put out a bounty. You're like, Jason, you did you did reward her for this. We remember this. You just didn't t- put it down in your notes. Audrey Mackamson, or Mackamson, I put out a bounty for a Bigfoot USB. There was something called Bigfoot the Track Record, a Bigfoot encyclopedia. And it had a, we covered the story, it was about Bigfoot hanging out in Oregon near a place called Cock Rock, which is, which is a place where dudes go to bang each other, but but Bigfoot was there for some reason, just looking for love. Anyways, I'll put that episode in the show notes. You're like, no, Jason, tell us that story now. In that episode, I mentioned there was a USB, it was like lost media, I didn't think I could ever find it. She found it, and she sent me the link and I purchased it. And it's really cool. So, Audrey, I wanted to really thank you for that. So, you're going to be our captain, our pilot this episode today. If you guys can't find an obscure piece of lost media for me, that's fine, too. Just help spread the word about the show. Really, really helps out a lot. Also, to give a shout-out to the Patreons, there is currently a debate. It's not a debate. Everyone agrees on the Patreon Discord how much they hate me for being a f- <laughs> for being a fan of the Minecraft streamer dream apparently there's almost an uprising i expect to lose a lot of patreons this weekend because i do like dream audrey oh oh we got what am i talking about we also got this amazing fan art for fan art friday i almost forgot because i'm not looking at it on my screen but this was from the patreon discord this was from Longtime listener of the show, Patreon supporter as well, Rudy Jazz. Look at this. It's a little combination. Uh, don't, if you're driving. <laughs> if you're driving, you can look at it later. It's a combination of myself with the Dead Rabbit Radio logo. So it's, I got my hair cut, I'm all wooly, and apparently I, apparently I have the nose of a pig. I did not know that. I always assumed my nose was Romanesque and less Chief Wiggum, but whatever. I don't care either way. Rudy, thank you so much for providing this artwork for Fan Art Friday. It really is super duper awesome. Audrey, I'm going to go ahead and toss you the keys to the Jason Jet. We're actually going to leave behind Dead Rabbit. I forgot where we were going. We're going to leave behind Dead Rabbit Command. You're going to vroom vroom us on out to Mexico. (laughs) Audrey's flying us over the beautiful blue skies of the world. We're headed down to Mexico. Now, this first story, it's a little intense. I'm not going to go into a lot of the details with it, honestly, because I think the implication is more important than the the gruesomeness of it. On August 7th, 2021, you had a dude named Matthew Coleman of Santa Barbara. People, people are already skipping. They're like, nope, or saw this in the news, saw this in the news, where's the fast forward button? On August 7th, 2021, Matthew Coleman of Santa Barbara decides to kidnap his own two children. Kaleo... Three years old. It only gets it only gets worse from here, unfortunately. Kaleo is three years old, and Roxy is ten months old, and takes his beautiful little babies down to Mexico. And shortly after that, their mother, Abby Coleman, his wife, reports her children missing. I, this is a this is a pretty breaking news story. I mean, August seventh, we're still getting drips and drips of information, but we don't know if like the relationship was on the rocks. Like if he was sending out warning signs that he may be planning to do something brutal. They're actually lived up in, uh, where is it, Santa Barbara. So he's driving down to Mexico, and she reports them missing, and the police are like, oh, great. So I think there is more stuff going on. It wasn't like, oh, I think he spent a little too long on this day trip. I think she alerted them that he's been having some mental health difficulties. Matthew Coleman is then coming across the border 
from Mexico back into the United States, and everyone at the border had gotten a bolo for him, right? Be on the lookout for Matthew Coleman. So when his car comes, they stop him. Hey, Matthew. <laughs> He's automatically alarmed. They know his name. He's like, uh-oh. They start questioning him. They notice that there is uh, droplets of blood in his car, like on a sheet of paper. And most horrifically, neither of his children are in the car. So Matthew Coleman is arrested. He is questioned. And it turns out that he took both of his children down to this farm in Mexico and shot them both with a spear gun. All of that stuff is just horrific. All of that stuff is just absolutely horrific. It's a terrifying local news story, and it happens all too often. The reason why I'm talking about it on Dead Rabbit Radio, even though this is a true crime podcast, we don't cover stuff like that. We do cover more stuff like that on the TikTok. We cover kind of these local, weird, creepy crime stories on the TikTok. But on the show proper, I don't really talk about that type of stuff, unless it's super bizarre. This is super bizarre because his motive... And this is why I think they probably, Abby was probably aware that there were some mental health difficulties going on prior to this. He told, Matthew Coleman told the investigating officer, I believe it was an FBI officer, because you can read the affidavit on um, Crime Online. I'll put the link in the show notes. It's a really great website. I visit it every day. For my crime fix, I go to Crime Online. He tells the FBI agent, well, I had to kill him. I had to kill him. Because I learned the truth. You see, I am a, what you may call a conspiracy theorist. These aren't his exact words. He wasn't talking like Heath Ledger's Joker or anything like that. But I'm, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of puffing it up for you. I can just read the affidavit, but that's, that's no fun and it's kind of dark. He goes, listen, I've been learning about this stuff about the Illuminati and QAnon. Did you know about QAnon? The FBI actually goes, yes, I do read the newspaper. I'm aware of that term. He goes, but see, the Illuminati has opened my eyes to what's really going on in this world. You see, my wife and mother of my children is a reptilian. She has what's known as serpent DNA. And she gave it to my children. Officer, I'm telling you this right now. Those weren't children I killed in the desert. They were monsters. I didn't murder my children. I just saved the world. Now, even though that was me adding a bit of dramatic flair, the lights flickering, that is the gist. He did say QAnon and Illuminati conspiracy theories, and he, quote, was receiving visions and signs revealing that his wife possessed serpent DNA and had passed it on to his children. And the phrase, uh, to save the world, was also used in that affidavit as well. Terrifying story. Absolutely terrifying story. And I know right now there are already some people typing into the YouTube comments, maybe this is just a story to make conspiracy theorists look bad. Listen, there's already enough stuff that makes conspiracy theorists look bad. I would, It would be hard-pressed for a group to just pick out a local crime story, no matter how horrific. And, and this actually isn't in the top 10 most horrific crimes that have happened in the past month. I mean, for this family, it is. And for this family, it's the worst. But you know what I mean? Like, if, if this was some sort of conspiracy, oh, oh, they're trying to make QAnon look bad, so they're going to tie... No, no, no. That... <sighs> There's worse they could have chosen. There really is worse crimes they could have chosen. What I I do enjoy investigating conspiracy theories, and I love sharing them with you. And I think you guys sense that I, there's definitely, at the very least, an interest in conspiracy theories. And for me, at the very most, like a joy. Like I enjoy finding these things. And you guys are very well put together adults as well. But this guy had most likely an underlying mental illness, and found the conspiracy theories as well. It's interesting because I think, I don't think this is going to become a huge major story and they're going to try to use it to push away conspiracy theory content on YouTube or anything like that. But I, this is almost like the Freddy Krueger defense, which I don't think has ever been used. But if, if they did, that's a cool name for it, where somebody commits a crime based on a horror movie. And that person had been struggling with mental health issues their entire life. And then they became a huge fan of the Freddy Krueger franchise. They bought a time machine, went back to the 80s. They're a huge fan of Freddy Krueger. And they end up making a glove out of knives and stabbing someone to death. Or just, just took a knife and stabbed someone to death. Um, one, that's most likely happened. 
That's most likely happened already. But was Freddy Krueger to blame? Were those horror movies to blame for the crime? Or if he had watched The Wind in the Willows too many times, would he have, <laughs> would he have dressed up like a frog and drowned people? Like, because the underlying mental illness is already there, and if it's untreated, that's really the key. Like, if you can get it treated, you're fine. But if it's untreated, and you have the movie stimulating the thought pattern, would any movie do that? What if he was watching action movies all the time? Would he want to go on a mass shooting rampage? So that, that's where I think this lies. I don't necessarily blame the conspiracy. I will say this, though. Freddy Krueger and The Wind in the Willows and The Matrix, they don't ever imply that they're true, even though even though Nightmare on Elm Street was based on a true story. I'll put that episode in the show notes. It's really creepy, but the movies themselves don't apply to be true. These conspiracy theories are supposed to be true, so there might be more of an argument that the conspiracy theories weighed more on him. Actually, that's a good point, because as I'm arguing with myself in a 90-degree closet, Freddy Krueger doesn't go, now listen, kids, this is a true story. This is what happened. This is what happens if you try to take vigilante justice against a child rapist. This is what will happen to you. We know it's fictional. And see, when we look at conspiracy theories like um, there's a whole po group of population that has serpent DNA in them and they're going to pass it on. We've covered this conspiracy theory. We've Not only have we covered this conspiracy theory, oddly enough, we've covered multiple times people have tried and successfully used spear guns to kill people, which is such a weird, exotic weapon. We covered it when the, the guys were fighting on the airliner, and we covered it with the guy who killed his family using a spear gun. But anyways, I'll put those episodes in the show notes. That's not an advertisement. I'm not using that as an advertisement, as a weapon of choice, but... But we did cover the serpent seed conspiracy theory once. There was a minister who believed that people were passing this around. And that, that's a quite foolish conspiracy theory. That's one of the ones where I'd be like, wait, well, if we, if we can't detect it, if we can't detect that serpent DNA, like you look at a microscope, you see regular little sperm. And then you look and there's little microscopic alligators trying to eat those sperm. You can't detect that there's serpent DNA in there. You can't scientifically do anything. It's it's quite foolish. But he was having these visions and seeing these signs as well. He's probably flipping through the radio station. And every so often, the song Maneater would start playing. He's like, oh, Maneater, that's like an alligator. And he puts this stuff together. And But who knows? It's tragic. And it, sh it goes to show that sometimes when you take these conspiracy theories too seriously, plus, I don't think that can just be your kind of believing stuff that doesn't exist if you believe in every conspiracy theory you take it someone believes the earth is flat that doesn't affect you in any way shape or form it really doesn't so i don't care about it i think it's dumb but it doesn't affect it doesn't affect me in any way or other people but when you take that conspiracy theory and you un put an underlying mental illness to it that's the problem. I think that's really the problem, and I think that's the main issue here. If people want to believe that 10% of the population is reptilian, whatever, then the only way you can become famous and rich and powerful is to either be reptilian or to join the reptilian core or whatever. You have a little reptilian badge, ask me about my reptilian ancestry. Whatever. That doesn't affect us in any way, shape, or form. And if they just go, ah, Queen Elizabeth, she's a big old reptile. I saw, I saw her laying an egg. I saw her laying an egg the other day, and Meghan Markle popped out of it. Whatever, who cares? Like, that really doesn't affect us. If that person is then going to do something violent, which is the extreme minority, which most conspiracy theorists, they don't do anything like that. But there's the extreme minority. There's a extreme minority of people who love motocross, who are also using their dirt bikes to run drugs across the country and maybe to run over their enemies' faces. Um, their enemies, they have to wait till their enemies sleep in and then they're like, ring, ring, ring. they got the silencer on their bike. There's a, a small minority of every group, but we are conspiracy theorists, or at least we enjoy conspiracy theories. And this one, unfortunately, it's un whether or not the conspiracy theory angle in it is an unfortunate, it's, it's an unfortunate true crime. I'm not trying to gloss over that, but I thought it would be interesting for us to take a look at because we enjoy these topics. Um, sometimes people take them too far and have other mental issues. And the people who really paid for this was the two children, uh, Kaleo and Roxy, and then Abby, and then everyone who loved those people. Matthew Coleman, who cares about that? Anyways, uh, I, I'll say I won't cuss on the family episode. I won't cuss on this family podcast where I just talked about this horrible, brutal crime. Awful, awful, awful. I, I, you just, you, you don't even want to think about it. But Audrey, let's go ahead and toss you the keys of the carpenter copter. We are leaving behind 
Mexico. Such a sad story. And we are headed on out to the Vologada. <laughs> <laughs> what a baby named this place? <laughs> you're like, no, Jason, you're just mispronouncing it. Vologda region in Russia. <laughs> in the Volgada region in Russia, it's August 2nd, 1982. Wow, I didn't even plan that. That's almost uh, 21 years ago. <laughs> you're like, Jason, <laughs> Jason, how? <laughs> How hot is it in that closet? That's not even cold. That's like 40-something years ago. Anyways, close close enough. It's 1.15 p.m. We're in the Volgada region in Russia. And there's a young woman. Her name is El Smirnova. She's walking through this birch forest. Do, 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 having a good time. I don't know. It doesn't actually say what her mood was. She could have been deeply depressed. But anyways, she's walking through the forest, and she hears a loud, booming Russian voice. Come closer. Do not be afraid. The equipment is switched off. She's, <laughs> she's like, is that, the vo is that the voice from Gauntlet? El Smirnoff needs food badly. She's walking through this forest, and she sees a clearing. And in the clearing is a UFO, a flying saucer, typical flying saucer, shiny metal, just sitting on the ground, and she sees, like, three dudes walking around. One of them looks to be a white guy. And he has dark eyebrows with gray eyes. And then standing next to him are these two other dudes who look Japanese. And the white dude, she said they all looked around 25. So she is trying to gauge how attractive they are. She said the white dude starts smiling at her. And then goes, Elkan Seol! Which apparently is some alien thing. It's not Russian. She didn't understand it. And the two Japanese dudes uh, leave them. They like go and they walk by these stairs that are leading up into the UFO. I didn't describe the UFO. I have more stuff about the UFO. I'm too, too caught up in this romantic drama we're about to get entangled in. The UFO... It was it wasn't sitting on the ground so much as it had like the little landing gear, and then it had the like these stairs, like the door, like how you would picture like a UFO from like a 1950s movie, and like the stairs going up into like the open doorway. And she said the door had like these intricate designs of like animals and plants on them. It was like this little motif on the door. Because if you're going to build, if you're going to build a UFO, if you're going to build a vehicle that spends 90 percent of its time in the dark reaches of space, you want to have a nicely designed door. You want to show off to nothing, to the nothingness that lives in the cosmos. Elka and Sue. All of a sudden, L starts to go, oh, oh, she starts getting dizzy and sleepy. And she's starting to think, oh no, I'm being hypnotized. I'm being hypnotized by this really handsome man in the middle of the woods. And she starts saying, please don't hypnotize me. Please, please don't hypnotize me. So he stops. And then he goes, well, <laughs> I was going to hypnotize you, but now I guess we'll have a conversation. He goes, my name is Ollie Can. I am Ollie Can from the planet Sunny. S-U-N-N-Y. And this is where we really, this story is interesting, but this is where you really start to ask questions about it. I got this story from ThinkAboutItDocs.com. They got it from a magazine called Veer Russia, number 18. I couldn't really figure out what that digest was. It seems to be maybe some local newspaper for the town or province of Veer. T-V-E-R. You're shaking your head. You're like, that's not how you pronounce it. Why do you even go to other countries? Um, anyway, so I don't know what that magazine is, but think about it. Docs.com has never steered us wrong in the past. Ali Khan tells this woman, L, that he's from the planet Sunny. And then the name is changed. I think he realized that that was probably a dumb name for a planet because then he goes, oh, yeah, no, no, Sonny. That's that's what those two dudes need to call it. I call it Gelios. So there's actually two names for this planet, which is weird. Like, I guess we have Earth and then sometimes nerds call it Terra. But Sonny or Gelios, it's one of the two. It's one of the two names. So, so if you're trying to fly to this planet... You might get lost. The, he said it's about 45 light years away in the Ursa Majoris constellation. Now, he says that they're there in this particular... They're having this conversation. He goes, the reason why we're here in this particular location is we want to investigate some nearby atomic weapons. 
And L goes, oh, well, there's none in this area. There's no missile silos. We're fully aware of that. We have to fight back the evil capitalist pigs of the United States. And Ali Khan goes, well, there actually are nuclear weapons here. He said about three kilometers away, there's an underground bunker full of nuclear weapons. And at that point, she's like, three kilometers away? That's where my house is. He then pulls out a beige-colored clock dial. And he begins to present holograms of her brain. She's able to see her brain, and she sees regions of it are mapped out in green and red. It's very Christmassy. And after looking at a hologram of her brain, he shuts off, the, shuts off the device, doesn't shut off her brain. And he goes, quote, we will talk to you. You have a good memory. You don't smoke or drink alcohol. Unquote. So if you've ever thought about if you're a fan of alien encounters and you have either of those vices, um, stop it. Stop doing that stuff. Stop smoking and drinking because someday you may meet an alien from the planet Sunny. He begins the quizzer, which we see a lot. You know, a lot of times humans don't have time to ask questions because these aliens are asking so many questions. He's asking the weird stuff like, what do humans know about water? She's like, well, I mean, there's two thirds of it. We have the most in the solar system. He wanted to know about all the elements, what we know about water, fire, sky, and earth. He asked Elle, uh, what's the meaning of the universe? <laughs> She's just sitting there and he's like, oh, wait, oh, wait, we'll just sit here on this rock until we figure it out. He starts to ask, does she believe in God? Does she read the Bible? She says she was a Christian and she worshipped Jesus. To which Ali Khan, the space alien, responded, Jesus, quote, was the man. Unquote. I don't know if that's the equivalent of being like, oh, he's the man. Or if it was saying that Jesus, yeah, that's the right guy. I don't know for sure. But he also said that our religious life, like just all of our religions in general, these guidelines were necessary, but just in the beginning. Which is a kind of an interesting interesting alien look at it like all of the maybe these religious rules that our societies follow they're created in different ways all over the world but these religious rules are created but someday we move past them i don't know he begins to show her maps they're, they're having a long conversation here he shows her a map of the ancient world and then the world of how it is today when he's showing her the map and these are electronic maps he's not rolling out these paper maps when he's showing her these maps, he shows her these massive mineral deposits and unearthed riches in the modern world. He also said, there's three undiscovered elements on the planet Earth that humans don't know about yet. They're here, here, and, and here. And pulls out one from behind her ear, and here you are! It's, it's all radioactive. She's all melting. No, there's apparently three undiscovered elements we haven't discovered yet. And this is where we start to get into some really interesting stuff. Ali Khan then went on to say that in the year 2050, there's going to be massive climate change. It's going to ravage the world. Floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, snowstorms. Islands would disappear. All coastal cities would be underwater. So if you're big, if you're big into windsurfing, 2050 is the year to be here. He also says that life is eternal, which I, I like this one, but there's also a little catch this one. Life is eternal. It just kind of flows through the universe. Life, the soul force, simply transfers from one form of energy into another and then to another and to another, and it's endless. But not for everyone does this happen. So that's a really interesting, again, a little tidbit here. We're really kind of analyzing this because on the one hand, you could go, oh, hell. Right, Someone who broke the religious code, someone who didn't believe in the truth, their soul does not continue to travel through the universe. They go to hell. You could also go, no, enlightenment. You transfer forever through the universe, and then eventually you've been everywhere, and you are then enlightened, and you go somewhere else. Or are simply obliterated. What what else is there? You've ascended. You've experienced everything. Or, more. those are both kind of older theories. Or you could say NPCs, the current, relatively new, couple-year-old conspiracy theory of there are a lot of people out there who are non-player characters who don't have a soul. They are simply moving about society, and they don't have the life force that the rest of us have. 
One thing I thought was interesting, and this guy's dropping knowledge, too. This guy's dropping bombs. Not literally. He's not dropping atomic bombs. He says that a lot of the UFOs we see are remote controlled, which is back in 1982, remote control obviously was a thing, but it's not as popular as with drones are today. But he goes, most UFOs you see are not piloted by life forms. Most of them are remote controlled. They're on the other side of the moon. There's a base on the dark side of the moon. There's a base over there. So... I'm not going to, he didn't give an actual statistic like 9 out of 10. He just says most of them. Most of the UFOs you see, if they crash, there'd be nothing on board, which would make sense. The risk is much lower to be discovered. The chances of losing an entire experienced crew is zero if they're on a base somewhere and they're flying the UFO. Like, because drone technology has advanced so much, you would have to assume that alien drone technology would be light, literal, light years ahead of us. Don't, wouldn't it make sense to put three tiny people on a ship, on a crowded little ship, and shoot them across the cosmos? You could shoot them across the cosmos, but then they set up a base on Mars, and they use that to interact with us, sending little UFOs down. He ends his conversation with this. He says that on his planet, there's a population of 200 million people. There's no skyscrapers. All the buildings are pretty level. We'll get into that. That's a really important detail in a second. He says there's no starvation because they all eat albumin, which I had to look that up. It's egg white. That's their entire diet is egg white. And he goes, they make it. They have this process that they can make tons of albumin in one minute. They don't need a ton of chicken. They're like, step one, get 10 trillion chickens. No, they can mass produce this albumin and they eat it. That's the only food they need. I'm sh I'm sure they probably make it tastier, like putting spices in it and make it shaped like a chicken and then eat it. Who knows? Maybe they do. But it doesn't matter. That's all they eat. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's still egg white. And he goes, there's no starvation. And he offers L the recipe. He goes, how would you like to be able to make tons of albumin in a minute? And she refuses. She's like, that's so disgusting. That's so gross. Even though I live in the Soviet Union in 1982, I would rather stand in a bread line than just eat egg white. That's pretty much the end of the conversation. He does say, I'll see you again every four years. And they did return in 1986, 1990, and 1994. It's a typical alien story. We have kind of a communication of ideas. You have her kind of being shocked by the presence of these guys. Very typical. The reason why I wanted to cover it it's not for all that stuff. It is interesting. I always think it's interesting when aliens talk about religion. It seems like such a man-made thing, but we see all these stories that make us think it's something else. But what if aliens are dumb is the point of this story. Because I saved some stuff here for the end. We kind of sprinkled it on throughout. But the undiscovered... See, I still would... I think science... I think science is wrong. I think you could have undiscovered elements out there. I do. I think that we don't know what we don't know. It's a phrase I use a lot in my personal life. We don't know what we don't know. But then there's stuff that this alien says that is knowably false. It's absolutely not true. So let's go back to when he said that the buildings on his planet were not skyscrapers. He's talking about climate change. He's talking about the elements. He's talking about life being eternal, flowing through the universe. He also says that we are a lopsided planet. He tells this woman in 1982, listen, lady, I know you're just some girl walking through the woods, but you have a serious problem you need to address. People have built buildings on the wrong side of the planet. So because we have skyscrapers and they're not evenly spread out, like our civilizations are tend to be along the coastlines and along rivers, we've actually unbalanced the world. The buildings are making the world wobble a little too much. And it's actually going to make the earth... If you don't... <laughs> lady, if you don't in the middle of the woods in Russia fix this, if you guys keep building cities and the population keeps growing the planet Earth is actually going to fly out of orbit. It's actually going to get so wobbly. You're like, fine, you're putting the last rivet in this new building. They're like, hand me that rivet, Tony. Finally, the, this building is done. Bunk, bunk, bunk. And then all of a sudden, whoa, whoa. And the next thing you know, we're orbiting Jupiter. That is not possible. 
I don't even think I have to explain the science of why that's not possible, but I will, because I actually think it's super interesting. Everything on this planet is from this planet. Like, when we build a massive skyscraper, all that stuff is from the planet. We're not adding anything to the planet or taking anything away. We're just building a skyscraper. And I did an episode on this a long time ago because I was curious about this. I had to look it up. The Earth gets heavier every single year by tons. Gets heavier every single year through space dust and meteorite impacts. So the world gets heavier and bigger every year. It doesn't matter what we do as far as building this stuff. It's interesting because as he so on his planet, there's no uneven buildings. All everything was perfectly mapped out. So their planet didn't go wobbling off into the cosmos. If we keep building along coastal lines, and it's not, I keep saying skyscrapers, it's not even really the size of the buildings. Like that's part of it, but just if you have too many even small buildings on one side of the planet, the planet's gonna fly out of orbit. People forget how massive earth is that's the thing with the flat earth theory they go way up and they're like i don't see the curve the earth is so huge like even just the the size of the earth can be mind-boggling sometimes what's interesting is if coastal he talked about the climate change if the coastal cities are wiped out in 2050 that'll actually reset the clock because all of that coastal buildings all of those uneven cities will actually save so he's saying climate change is good so, so, so take that, YouTube. Take that, YouTube's algorithm that's going to hear me say climate change is good and do something funky to this video. He also says that, you know, when he was showing the... I left this part out because I wanted to add it to the end. He said when he was showing the map of the ancient world, he said the pyramids were built with the assistance of aliens. In fact, it wasn't just myself. I'm not, I'm not 10,000 years old. It wasn't just our alien race. There were five different... Star systems worth of aliens. They all came down to build these pyramids. But the pyramids exude an ionized poison. So you can't go near them. If you're around the pyramids too long, it'll kill both humans and aliens. Because they're just these powerful things. That's not true. That's not true. Now, if you told somebody that in 1982 Russia, it might, might I mean, they weren't bumpkins that might have raised an eyebrow or three because she's living near that radioactive bomb factory but that's not true like there are i'm not saying there's like people living right next to the pyramids but there are people who make their job they're tour guides around the pyramids they're not mutants they're not ionized poisonous freaks unless that's the biggest cover-up of all maybe i've exposed the biggest conspiracy i just dropped the ultimate red pill the pyramid pill so it's an this story is just kind of interesting to look at because the aliens fly away and she has this information. She passes it on to the journalist and we have this story. But what if aliens are wrong? Aliens are interesting because it's the one paranormal phenomenon that we assume is smarter than us. Like, sure, people look to angels and demons for guidance. Well, people look to demons for shortcuts. People look to demons for shortcuts because they want to get rich and famous. So they don't have any of that serpent DNA in them. They weren't lucky enough to have that made-up thing put inside their body. So they'll turn to demonic forces to become rich and famous. They'll look for shortcuts. People talk to angels for protection. But ghosts, people, even when they're, like, talking to ghosts, maybe they'll want to know the future. But no one's ever, like, using a Ouija board to find the answer to some equation or to find the cure for cancer or to do something like Which they should, now that I think about it. We, we did cover the soul phone, the people who were trying to build the phone. I'll put that episode in the show notes. Every time I say that phrase, it costs, costs me five extra minutes at work. Uh, guys, I have to go pull up the episode. But the soul phone, they were trying to get this phone built so they could talk to the dead and to help with scientific advances. But for the most part, ghosts are the spooky people who hang out in your closets and stand in dark hallways. Bigfoot is just a big old dummy trying to, trying to hook up with some dudes at Cock Rock in Oregon. You know what I mean? Cryptids are just these monsters. Aliens are the ones we assume are smarter than ourselves. And and it's interesting because it is it does have a bit of the demonic in it that we want them to solve our problems. There's people who believe aliens are going to invade the planet, but there's a lot of alien enthusiasts who believe they're going to save the planet. They're going to help cure us. They're going to bring us together in a good way. We become part of the space brotherhood. It's a shortcut. Because we can't do it ourselves. We can't do it ourselves, right? We can't see past each other's differences and we can't you know, hold each other's hands with people that we absolutely hate and realize that all of this stuff is so fleeting. What's the point? Let's be together now. 
We can't do that. We can't do that as a people. We can't do that as cultures. So aliens can do it. Alien, it's a shortcut. It's a shortcut. We don't want to do it ourselves. But what if they're wrong? Like, what if they are wrong? The uneven city thing just is scientifically invalid. It's an interesting story because what he's saying is false. And we put a lot of faith in these aliens to come down and save us. And we covered recently, like, what if aliens are demonic? What if they're trying to take over the world? What if it's not even that sinister? What if they're just as dumb as we are sometimes? They just give bad advice. What if a fleet of UFOs came down tomorrow and said this stuff? You'll find these undiscovered elements. Life is eternal. You move, move your cities around or the world's going to go full. How would people take that? They clearly are smarter than us. They have this fleet of UFOs. They've descended from the heavens. They're clearly more technologically advanced from us. Would we as a species be smart enough to go, you're wrong. Like you may be smarter than us in some stuff, but that's not true. We know <laughs> your, your planet may be wobbly. It's funny. I said, what we do, we know the answer. Most people would acquiesce to the aliens. They go, well, they must know more than us. Let's start changing the way we build cities. And that would be the least of my worries, right? Imagine if they go, these aliens know way more than us. They have all this advanced technology. They've shown us where these riches are. We haven't found these undiscovered elements yet, but they've shown us where these riches are. We've moved our cities and everything seems to be great. They also only have a population of 200 million. And we're... Seven billion. They know more than us. Maybe that's the correct thing to do as well. Sometimes when we listen to the so-called smartest people in the room, we end up making the dumbest and deadliest decisions. deadrabbitradio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. TikTok is at deadrabbitradio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great weekend, guys. Deadrabbitradio.com